Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the final of Season 1 of Rebel Imperium. Which is exciting, really, because Season 2 started yesterday. But uh, we've managed to get the final scheduled the day after, which is not too bad, actually, considering this was actually a, well, was scheduled to be a six-week playoffs. And we've got it done in a little over four weeks. So well done, everyone who took part in that. We've really moted through getting those games played. Uh, the final here is between Singe and... A, um, and we've got Elphic Grand Coalition up against uh, Superior Being Ring. So it's uh, it, 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 but there's a lot to, to get through with these two teams. 2300 Elves here are the underdog for this one. This is the team featuring two Rebel Legends. We have Glor and Lana the Witch Elf with RG5, Strength 4, Wrestle Tackle and Leap. That's not bad going at all, is it? And then you've got the Tower Reversed, who is, of course, Tomo's Elven Union catcher. He is Strength 4, RG5, Movement 9, with Block Dodge and Leap as well. Uh, so they're the two standout players, and the rest of the team isn't bad on its own. You've got a Mighty Blow Witch Elf there, you've got a Strength 4, Dark Elf Blitzer, uh, another Plus Movement Pro Elf catcher. A couple of War Dancers, both with Pro, one of whom has Strip Ball as well. And your strong arm, accurate high elf thrower for good measure. All sorts to like if you're an elf coach having a look at this team. And Singe has actually done... He's sort of done quite well to get this far. I mean, we're in the final, of course he has, but caused a couple of, a couple of upsets along the way. He was uh, the coach that took down Cornite's massive deck. Uh, we had four decks who were over 200 in deck value. And if you don't know anything about Imperium, that won't mean much to you uh, but they are sort of big high tier lots of grinding through the season to build up really massive decks uh, and it's actually the smallest of those four big ones that's made it to the final um, and uh, we'll have a look at that team in a second but these are the elves there's there's so much to get through with that it's like a mini superstar shootout this they've got an apo as well which player do you apo there which players go on LOS duty which players to leave on the bench? All questions that Singe has to answer for us here. They are up against the Infinite Krakens, which is uh, his Divas here, otherwise known as A. Uh, and the last team featuring two Rebel Legends. This one features four. So again, those of a big O persuasion will recognise Alawe Undeuce. That is Monkey Chunks' high elf catcher. He's a natural one-turner. Um, with two plus movements, he's got sprint, he's got sheer feet, he's got dodge, and he has juggernaut for good measure. Uh, we've got the vampire, Batman. He's a pom jump up vampire. Not much to dislike about that. We have Ika Mouse, who's a legendary Chaos Dwarf Bull Santor. RG3, sure hands, mighty blow. Kind of a bit of a jack of all trades, that player. Certainly not the star player on the team, but it's a bit weird to say for a legend but can, can help out in all sorts of situations. He's got guard, he's got break tackle, he's got sheer hands. Uh, just a useful all-round tool. And the actual probable star player of the team, Super Dragon 6000. The Strength 5 Mighty Blow Tackle Fend High Elf Blitzer, who's been running around REL for a number of seasons now. So those are the four players that are actually listed as rebel legends in the game despite the fact that they haven't all reached a legendary rank you can see batman there hasn't there's a couple of others that are worth looking at as well how about that brett blitzer with rg5 strip ball tackle and leap you don't see that on a brett blitzer all that often do you? Uh, we've got an rg5 vamp as well with pro leap and bludge he can cause a nuisance and a claw minotaur just Claw Mighty Blow, nothing else. But of course, a Strength 5 player like that is always going to be a threat with Claw Mighty Blow. It's the only Claw player on this superior being ring team. He does have access to chops, but he doesn't have any other Claw chops. He does have two Strength 4s and another Strength 4 High Elf Blitzer at the bottom there. Um, you've got a High Elf Lineman with Guard. And then that is what I would clearly recognize as the Roadblock card. Block, Dodge and Stand Firm on him. And then you've got a chalk blocker with guard there as well. And a high elf thrower with accurate and leap for good measure. So you've got one, two, three leaping threats on this team. 
four rerolls as well, which is a little bit on the expensive side. But then the team's at 2760, so the whole thing is kind of on the expensive side. Um, Singe, I am ready to go when you two are at this point. Because uh, I can talk the lovely people through inducements. And a good point, yeah, no thralls on this team that has two vampires. So any bloodlusts, you have to live with them because there's nothing to bite. But it's worked for him this far. He's managed to get all the way to the final. Uh, the vamp can't bite anything. So even if you're playing a, an afterlife team or anything like that, if there's no th a vamp can only bite a thrall. So any bloodlust here, he either has to reroll or just allow the vamp to run off the field. So I suppose that's what the fourth reroll is for. That does explain that. So there you go. In terms of inducements, they are in the inducement phase now. Um, Singe will have 460k to spend. If you're elves with a 2300 team and 460k to spend, you're probably quite happy with that. Um, I think I know which where he might go on this. Um, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give anything away until after both coaches have gone. Now, you can't get Eldril. Because it's a mixed team format, so there are no star players. <clears throat> you can't get any star players at all. Uh, they just aren't available in mixed team format. And as well, this being Imperium, you're not allowed to pick up mercenaries either. And that rule basically exists because it's a card collecting game. And it felt daft to allow people to just pick up... Um, you know, they could pick up a mercenary war dancer if they don't have a war dancer card. Didn't really feel good for the game, if that made sense. So, I think, well, my, my prediction would be, um, with both coaches now away from the chat, that he would probably go for a wizard and a chef here. Because if he takes a chef, he's got a chance to eat into some of those team rerolls that we've already said that A might need for those vampires. Uh, we've seen chef w with such a, a high um, team value difference between a lot of the teams. Ricky, for example... Uh, a coach who made it to the Rebel Playoff semi-finals and then made it to the semi-finals of Imperium as well. He was running one of the lowest value decks in the tournament that was basically just, um, again, big O player. So the, the Orc from Excess's team, Lefty Leroy. Uh, in fact, I can show you the team here. Um, he was running this Orc, the Strength 4, IT5, Sure Hands, Tackle Orc. And then, I mean, 16-10, it's not like it's a, a nothing team, but he came through really down on team value against a bunch of people because he was so far down on team value that he was able to pick up chefs pretty much in every single round. And those chefs are actually pretty good, it turns out, when you're able to deny some of these high-value teams access to their rerolls. The game is live. You can get away. You can get away with being a little bit uh, cautious on the vampire use. Only using them when you really need to. And you can just about manage. It's raining. Which will make things interesting. We can see that Singe has picked up a wizard. And he's actually picked up two extra apothecaries. And two Bloodwiser babes as well. So very much expected to take some damage here. He just wants to keep all of his key players available to him as best he possibly can. So LOS duty goes to Dark Elf Blitzer, High Elf Blitzer, who are rookies, and the Guard Lyman as well. But he's got both War Dancers on the field here. And actually the War Dancers at the front of the line rather than at the back of the line because he wants to protect some of these more valuable, well, what he's considered to be more valuable pieces here, such as the Blodge Steppers and such. So no chef, but he does have three apos and two babes. Remember as well, this is overtime format. So if it was to go the distance, it comes down to attrition. Both teams have a bench. We've got three on the bench for for the elves and two on the bench for the superior being ring. Uh, and at the moment, weirdly, that includes their AG5 Piece. But I imagine this is probably used defensively 
as opposed to offensively. Surprise, surprising to see the Minotaur on the bench as well. You'd expect him to want to have that on the field and do as much damage as he can. Quick snap to get this one underway. So leaving the, the Minotaur on the bench, it's a lot of team value to be leaving on the sidelines there. Of course, the Minotaur, not the most reliable piece. Doesn't have block, doesn't have Juggernaut or anything like that. Well, you can't have a Weather Dome, Z, because you need the card for a Weather Dome to be able to play a Weather Dome. Uh, what's the deal with extra Apos in Imperium? Uh, well, if Blood Bowl 2 allows you to do it, I can't really stop it. And I figure, well, because of the fact that you don't have star players, it's a fair enough trade-off to go for an extra Apothecary, as far as I'm concerned. Magnet, we'll see if we can beat that over the course of the match, eh? I didn't actually know that, Varks, and it's the first I've learned of it. But Singe is obviously aware of it, and he's got three apothecaries in this game. <laughs> so, not so much an apothecary as a field hospital at this point. Ready to patch these elves back up. I wonder if it's to do with the fact that you've got... I wonder if Cyanide's coding is something to do with... Uh, Every team gets one Apothecary, but because we're mixing four Elf teams, each of the four Elf teams can buy one Apothecary, if that makes sense. I wonder if it's something to do with that. Here comes a Blitz from Super Dragon, straight onto the War Dancer. Tackle does its thing. Mighty Blow does not. That's the Wandering Apples. Well, there you go. Can you buy more than one Wandering Apple? But yeah, also there's a card being played saying that he's not allowed to buy bribes. So there's a, a special play card called Refs Under Scrutiny. Uh, that was played by... Was it Synergy, possibly? It was one of, one of the guys who didn't make the final, I think. Um, and that states that you're not allowed to buy any bribes. But yeah, there's, there's some remarkable players on the field. This... Uh, should be interesting. Activating the vamp. No thralls on the field, remember. So, a proper glass cannon approach here for Batman. Doesn't do any damage there, so Singe will be happy with this. Two, three blocks taken. And no pain suffered at this point. Here comes a fourth. No mighty blow this time. Got nothing doing. Oh, is it Singe who played the card? I can't see because we had to remove the decks for for the new season, and I haven't quite scrolled far enough back up in the Discord. So going for the sure hands pick up with Ika Mouse, and well, if you roll a six, anyone you like will pick up the born ball. Ball is the word I'm looking for. Rain or shine. So this vamp does have pro. So there's a chance to save him on some bloodlust there. But I would expect to see that thing not activated right now, because there's no real need. Well, the vampire does have uh, jump up as well, so he can kind of pile on every turn he likes. So Singe's not going to put the pressure on straight away. You, you actually wonder whether the rain might affect Singe worse than it affects uh, worse than it affects A. Okay, we're going for the Blitz against the Vampire. It's going to take down the RG5. Would be surprised if you targeted those things too heavily from an attrition standpoint. 
Because they're likely enough to eventually remove themselves anyway. He's got an option here to place a lot of elves between the ball and the rest of his team. And then that pass and play isn't really an option when it's raining quite as heavily as this. Good shout, good shout, Luke Lears. If he's on the floor, then to stand him up, you have to force the bloodlust. I quite like that, actually. That's good thinking. Yeah. If you leave him lying on the floor, he's pseudo-removed at that point. So this is going to be not a one dice against the against the chaff there. But some pretty good pressure here from Singe. This is difficult to see how the infinite krakens can make a suitable cage. So what's he got on the bench? He's, well, he's got the plus movement catcher, useful for one turns. If that's not good enough for your one turn attempt. Uh, the tower reverse. He's got his thrower, which makes all the sense in the world, leaving that there. And just a, a rookie blitzer as well. So I imagine... Varkson, thank you very much for the tier one sub. Uh, and that's as good an opportunity as any to remind you all of September, as I should do as a streamer. Half price subscriptions during September to your favorite Rebel streamer and indeed other streamer, whichever you prefer. Now that's not a knockdown. Now, my assumption here is that we were aiming to get the ball either into a cage here or perhaps just into the hands of a Larway and Deuce to possibly try a score on this turn. We might expect to see a bit of a shoot-off here between these, uh, between these two teams. But failing to at least get a push there has kind of blocked that channel. Stun comes in on the high off blitzer. Follows up with a knockdown on the guard lineman. One of the few linemen on the field, actually. And not anymore. In fact, one lineman removed by another lineman. But yeah, I mean, players with the lineman name, very, very rare in the final of the Imperium Cup, as it turns out. I suppose you could... Well, no, a short blocker isn't a lineman. That is a positional, isn't it? So here goes Zika Mouse. And he's handing off in the rain. And that is a drop. This is very, very dangerous against the elves. He's got it this time. That's a reroll gone. And presumably, we're just looking to make a pass into Alawe and Duce here. Who does have the ball. This is all in the rain. And he's going to blitz through himself and double skull it with no reroll. He went for the score. And a great chance for Singe to steal. Does he have a player in scoring range? He does. In that pro elf blitzer there. Can he get this ball scooped up? Well, actually, the, the roadblock. Block dodge stand firm on this lineman is pretty useful right now. <laughs> that was about the most monkey chunks thing that could have happened to monkey chunks' player. Uh, remember as well, guys, that anything that happens here does count towards Metal's new Rebel Twitch clip competition. Uh, so, a chance... I think it's probably another Rebel mug you can win for that. Can the elves clear this ball? You've got an AG5 player to scoop it up. And you've got AG4 to do the rest. Here comes Gloran Lana. And straight out. On Oswald Flastica. Hoping to use the wrestle tackle there against that piece. He's going to have to try the Agi 4 and the tackle zone will be, or the Agi 5, sorry, and the tackle zone will be cancelled out by the rain and the chaw here. So that actually will be a 3 plus pickup. 
as things stand. He won't be able to get rid of that Chorf now. He's used the Blitz. A lot of big O representation in the Legends on the field here. I think two big O, three G-Man and one Ariel. The Ariel being the Super Dragon. How they haven't killed that thing, I don't know. Here comes the tower reversed. Three plus pickup is good. Leaps out. Hands off to the War Dancer. He dropped that. The rain having all sorts of effect here. You've got it this time. Now, are you willing to risk the pass play to the Pro Elf Blitzer at this point, having used the reroll? No, we're just looking to gain as much ground as possible down the field with the War Dancer, and he can sort of half screen this with that Bloodstep Frenzy player. Singing a great spot here. Does he have any more players that can make it over there? Not, not really. He's kind of relying on the fact that A is a little committed on the field. Tackle does its thing against the strength four. And that'll be a turnover. It's just relying on the blodge at this point. Super Dragon takes a hit, doesn't get a knockdown. So he needs to somehow knock this ball free. And he's pretty much only got the ball sent all to do that. He will get a two dice, but he doesn't have tackle on that piece. And then it's big dice from the thrower. And you're talking about potential interception risks from elves, which is never good news. It is raining. Which uh, does affect the intercept roll. A massively on the back foot here. And this will work well for Singe because he can afford attrition as well. He's got three Apos and three players on the bench. Of course, A does have defensive threats of his own. He's got an anti five leap, strip ball, wrestle, uh, sorry, Brett Blitzer. Not wrestle. Um, and Duke always the first. It's got Dauntless as well. Even if you were to give the, the ball to one of the strength four pieces on um, on Singe's team. So he's got defensive options himself. Well, here comes that blitz and you've probably got to commit a reroll to this. He does. He doesn't get the knockdown. And Singe looking very likely to be able to score in the next turn. The question will be whether he thinks he can possibly sneak off over at this side of the field and try to stall out another turn. Oh. Or whether he'll just run this one in. Batman takes a block. And we need to start finding removals now. That's a stun. Still not really enough at this point. There's two babes in play, remember? So KOs are pretty much... I mean, it's res format inside res format, this. So he's now protecting his natural one-turner. By leaving it up the field here. Bloodlust saved by pro. Oh, and a GFI fails. You can't throw that one. A's dice not working out for him here so far. So the tower reversed, coming back to take a hit against Lawi and Deuce here. He's just going to try and find a cheeky removal on that thing. Doesn't get it. One shot. If only he'd been willing to dodge the mighty blow witch. But the war dancers away. And Singe has the lead already. This doesn't strike me that it's going to be a low scoring affair this game. So A already down half of his rerolls. 
hasn't managed a single removal because that KO comes back and is 1-0 down off his own drive. It's about as bad a start as he could have hoped for, or unhoped for, I suppose. You know, save for everything just being killed. Same setup. There's a kick. Changing weather nice. The rain's gone. Too little, too late on that front. Two dice block is no good to start off with it. So the question now becomes whether A will just try and get this ball to his one turner, score himself, and just turn this into a, a proper shootout. It looks like he might be heading that way with the blocks he's taken so far. Knock down there. On the guard line, Elf. So, Undoos here in scoring range already. I feel like you might as well take a Super Dragon Blitz. Does precisely that. He's going to go and target the strength four. It's an arm value 8 piece as opposed to an arm value 7. He's targeting the reroll there as well from the leader. Nothing doing there. I mean, if this was to fail in some way, he's in all sorts of trouble. Here we go. Oh, and the pickup has failed. I I don't know how willing I would be to chance this now. He's gone for it anyway. We are just all in on this. No reroll. He's got a lot of built-in rerolls, but it's three GFIs now for Alawi and Deuce running for the line, and he's in. <laughs> <laughs> one one turn four is that turn four so we've seen singe I guess defend twice uh, we now see what he can do offensively as well, which means he'll likely bring his thrower onto the field. But it's now this Brett Blitzer that you want on um, as the potential threat. And those vampires could be useful for hypnogazing holes in screens as well. Question being whether you can afford to put both of them on there. Or whether he just wants to leave with one. So Minotaur on the field as LOS fodder, it seems. Imagine your team being so good that your Minotaur with Claw is on LOS duty. Of course, difficult for the elves to get a block away against that. But we might end up in a scenario here where Singe is quite happy to two-turn this and then just allow... 
Hey, to keep trying all these one turns. That's a blitz. That's a short kick as well. So that could really change things. Because there's a couple of Agi 5 leapers that could get themselves amongst the party here. It's never over till it's over in this game, is it? But he's only got one reroll now. So can't really afford to be burning that on this turn. This is a two dice against the War Dancer with Pro. Mighty Blow still not kicking in. But Super Dragon is going to go and base the ball on where the ball's about to land. Vampire hasn't bloodlusted. Now he's got the leap option. Oh, he's Hypno Gaze the Witch Elf. Okay. So that makes the dodge through here much easier for all of these players. So Infinite Krakens are going to just commit to this at this point, it seems. This game is really swinging backwards and forward. It's been quite a good watch so far, hasn't it? So he's leaving the RG5 in the backfield. And I wonder if he's going to try and leap that thrower under the ball. He doesn't. Oh, and that's not a great scatter for him. That's fairly straightforward for the elves to scoop that up. The tower reversed simply mocks your one tackle zone on the ball there. I think it would have been a bit more aggressive to have tried to, to leap this player under the ball. I know he didn't he couldn't really afford to use the reroll. But if he'd managed to catch that he might have at least asked. I mean it wouldn't have been ideal. But it asked a different set of questions, right? The question will be. Can Singe recover this and keep it safe from the multitude of threats that are on this field right now? Yeah, the Brett Blitzer would have been useful, but also he wants that as the, the safety threat, I think, in the backfield. I don't know whether he's being a bit too, uh, I guess, cautious with that player and therefore not actually using it at all. Frenzy play coming in here. I don't know if I like what we're doing here. To me, that's now put Super Dragon in a far worse position than he previously was. I know he's got the leap to just bail him out, but... I don't know how much I like that. So we can stand firm on this. Which gets a second bite of the cherry. And we can stand firm on that as well. If we want. There's the leap. There's the pickup. That's what that ridiculous catcher does for you. So his first pot. Oh, hang on. That's a dodge from tackle. It's failed. That'll be a hero. Oh, and he snaked it. Okay. Game on here. That's a stun for the tower reversed. And suddenly there's a chance for a turnover here and, and A to, to get this ball scooped up and in his own hands. It is all happening.
So one of the vamps is on the bench. We should point out. As is uh, Alave and Deuce. As you'd expect. It was a defensive drive. Strip ball war dancer also on the bench. Along with a couple of rookie blitzers there. First action minor at all. Well it was just a movement. It was a 4 plus. So that's fine. Burned a one, if you like. So he's got a free hit with Super Dragon against Glor and Lana here. He's one of the legends. It's legend versus legend here. There's the leap. Oh, and that ball's straight into the hands. Hang on. What are we doing here? That's a pass play. It's a Super Dragon who's dropped it. That was risky as all hell. That's a three plus. And we've dropped that again. And that player's dropped it. And it's right back where it started. There's the pow. So, I assume Super Dragon was in range to score on that last turn. He was, yeah, he was looking for the score on that player. So Frenzy play coming in against the thrower now. Of course the Tower Reverse is still stunned on this turn. So Singe still needs to get this ball scooped up. And safe but an Agi 5. Which elf will do that but then Super Dragon's tackle strikes again. Not a snake this time. Going to hand it to the thrower. We're all out of rerolls. Oh wow, we're just bombing this. Steak Mitten, thank you very much for the tier 1 sub. 17 months now. New season, Mount Fun in Debra, two plus away from score, and he's failed the dodge. We got ones falling out of the sky. That was an absolute yeet of a play from the thrower all the way up to the course. The nerves of steel on the catcher meant that that wasn't a terrible idea. Minotaur has now based the ball. And I mean, this this is just exhibition blood bowl at this point. It's all over the place. Ready, steady, bowl. Yeah, uh, call by Iron Claw. Thank you very much for the follow. Hope you're enjoying this madness. You can join Rebel Imperium Season 2 if you haven't yet done so. We are live for the new season. Uh, we don't actually have any injuries at, at all. What we do have is... Lots of elves rolling ones. There's another one. And that ball's back on the floor. Carnage. It's utter carnage. So Bretts are just... I mean, AG5 Bretts are just as bad as AG5 elves. Anything to do with the ball, it seems. Singe kind of just needs to calm this down at this point. Find a way to try and get a gap in the field. And then try and get forward to try and get this ball back in his own possession. This seems like the best chance to do that. That's a hit against the guard short blocker. 
And there's a knockdown. The second time of asking. So you just have Pro on that Ward answer, which probably makes this the best value piece to go and try and scoop that ball up from two tackle zones. <sighs> Four plus pickup with a 50-50 chance of the reroll. has failed. Pro has failed as well. And now there's an opportunity to surf that war dancer. If you will, to commit the blocks to it. But we do have score on threats as well. Super Dragon is still in range to score, but no rerolls for either team. You have to say that the Tower Reverse must be a high value target here, but no Super Dragon's he wants the ball in the in the hands of the strength five player by the looks of things. A knockout on one of the pro elf blitzers there. But of course, with two babes, it's more than likely to come back in the second half. It's difficult to know which part of the pitch to look at here. Oh, the Minotaur to turn over. One in nine. And suddenly, I think that's why he was on the bench. Push is good enough. So two plus two plus can score with that player. Uh, but you can come and grab this with the tower reversed, which is probably a much better choice, to be honest. Now, realistically, as the handoff is good, I think you may want to stall this out a turn. I don't know. Because remember, there is a one-turner on the other team. Singe is running for the corner. Yep, yeah, doesn't want to give A the chance to one-turn for 2-2. Two -two. Because, of course, it's much easier for, for A, A being his divus, much easier for him to one-turn than it is for Singe to one-turn. Is there anything we can do to stop that bull sentinel? Well, that'll do it. Just running around Ika Mouse for fun here. Realistically, he needs a player here if he wants to stop that blitz. But of course, the problem is going to be for... For A, how does he recover the ball? He almost needs the ball in the crowd so they can scatter somewhere where he can recover it. But this won't really stop the ball centre right now. That is much better. Nice block here against the thrower. Nothing doing on the damage front there. Yeah, so to me, the player here is to go and hypno gaze that witch elf or the thrower. You need to use the vampire to hypno gaze one of these players in the line.
And that should allow the ball center to make one dodge through here. doesn't do it. I think that's a misplay. Break tackle worked the first time. Three plus dodge was no good the second time. That's an easy score for Sinji now. Two one half time. <laughs> so the elves will get the ball again. three touchdowns and we still haven't actually seen Singer's elves have to put together a proper offensive drive because of course the one time he did need to do that there was a blitz but I mean there's enough team value and skills on the field that this one isn't over yet Extra reroll, which is useful in overtime format if we get that far. But yeah, he needs to find a way to turn this ball over. <laughs> I mean, he needs to do it at some point. What you'd say is if Singe scores quickly, he can always just one turn back. And then, obviously, every time you one turn back, you're just opening up another chance for a kickoff event that goes in your favour or something like that. The plus one fame is with the superior being team. So things like pitch invasions would, in theory, be in their favour. Mm. But don't expect this one to finish 2-1 by any stretch. break on the chaff. Problem now is that there's, there's so many scoring threats. How do you possibly deal with them all? So you don't want to make that pass now. Because the ball is currently out of range of all of the threatening players. What I would be trying to do is I'd, I'd certainly try and hypno-gaze one of the scoring threats. Because, of course, you can't cast the ball if you hypno-gaze. You'd have to activate that player before oh. doing that. Ah. problem with the wizard coming down on the one-turner is that the one-turner is never on the field in a turn when Singe can activate the wizard.
Mm. Oh, that's a blood loss. Pro saves the day. He's gone for the hypno gaze. I just don't think his hypno gaze is the right player. Although this has allowed Super Dragon to come through and find a power against Glor and Lana. So that was the idea. Still no mighty blow break. But we've based the ball with strength five. Well, tackle doesn't matter when this player doesn't have dodge, but we're at least forcing some backwards movement. Which in theory makes the throw a little harder, but with strong arm and accurate, it's not going to be too difficult to make that. <laughs> I don't see where the, the plan isn't going to just be pass the ball to the tower reversed and run it in because he doesn't even need the GFI from there. We have seen in this tournament that it's possible for some of these teams to be too big, if that makes sense. 2,700 against 2,300. Well... To be honest, that's a considerable difference to when you're playing 1700 against 1300. Because the 2300 TV team is still a more than good enough Blood Bowl team. And you give that team a wizard, access to multiple apothecaries and all that sort of jazz. So, it is possible that some of these teams are too big. Whereas 1300 can't really compete with 1700. It's not true here. And of course with elves, that wouldn't even be true anyway. Lana. No blitz. Because instead we want to find the surf play against that blitzer. And I, I like that a lot. If we can get an injury on this thing, it'll be huge. It's a knockout. Better than nothing. Again, I still don't see a world where we don't just pass it to this player and score. Yeah. Two dice block to be made here. That's a double pow. dodge well who saw that coming oh no way super dragon strikes again and suddenly barring a snake somewhere along the line here oh I wouldn't be rolling anything else here I just get this score you might blitz through Laura Lana perhaps but here yeah, we are. Oh. Well, it gets tackle off Super Dragon. Dodges away, makes the pick up, and makes it 2 2. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, well, well. What a bloody game this is. KO comes back. You know, it's a cliche, but if ever I needed an advert for Rebel Imperium, this game might just be it. Two-two. 
And all to play for again. So Singe has now lost that natural advantage he had. From being a touchdown ahead and having the ball on his drive. So often for a different setup here that's basically designed to make it a bit more difficult for the elves to gain all that ground that they had before. Minotaur's gone. He's been sacked off. Although that's kind of been the case on defensive drives. We've got both vampires on the field now. The amount of failed dodges from Super Dragon 6000 in this game has been nothing short of remarkable. I mean, a strength 5 blitz is bad enough, but when you just fall at his feet, it doesn't make life any easier. A running with 5 rerolls to 2 in overtime format. Remember on that kickoff event before, he got an extra one. Here we go again. Both teams get an extra reroll, and the Infinite Krakens now rocking six. So the hit against the Vampire can look to make that gap in the field. Two dice into a two dice. And of course, we're now in a situation where this, this is likely to go to overtime. Barring a failed... It, the one turn is the key, because for every touchdown Singe scores, A is just going to make an attempt at one turning back with his natural one turner. This could finish about 5-5 five, five at this point. I mean, yeah, if you got a kick with six rerolls, you just win, right? I mean, what can your opponent do to stop you? He has to roll sixes every single time, at which point you just get a six anyway. <laughs> there goes the tower reversed. I mean, I know kicks are just done off one dice roll, but if, if it's a tie on the dice roll, I imagine you would just roll it again. And every single time you roll with six rerolls, you're going to be upgraded to a six. So it's just a win on kicks. Ha! 
I don't think it will go to kick somehow. I'd be amazed if these two teams managed to get through eight turns each of overtime with neither of them scoring a touchdown. So Batman can make a jump up block here and does against Glora Lana. You'll pom this all day. This vampire has been largely rubbish, you have to say. There's no opportunity for a surf here because this is a sidestep player. Super Dragon coming through to hit the movement nine catcher. Mighty Blow, will it do anything this time? No, but it's Mighty Blow on, on A's team. He's doing naff all. The only thing saving him is Singe's remarkable ability to roll ones anywhere near Super Dragon 6000. What does it the big old guy say about that Admiral? The Admiral, the, uh, the Chaos player, there's just like a, it's almost like a disturbing presence three by three grid of failure surrounding that player. There goes sheer feet and down goes the ball sent Well we've got six re-rolls. Make that five. I don't really know where Eka Mouse is going. Oh and guess who's doubles gold again? <laughs> One thirty. thank you very much for the Twitch Prime. 16 months. Alawe and Deuce, the one-turner, has removed himself. And that could be massive. Second double skull from that player in the game. And if that KO doesn't come back, remember there's no babes for, for A, then that really changes the dynamic of this match. Because suddenly he doesn't have that option. So I think if you singe right now, all of a sudden you actually want to stall this out until turn 16. Score on turn 16 if you can. And then from that point on, you're just hoping you, you only get one 4 plus chance to get him back. And if he doesn't do it, he's going to have a very, very tough time equalizing the game. The more, the more time Singe scores, the more chances um, A has, assuming he equalises without using the one-turner, but the more chances he would in theory get to recover that player. Chance for a surf here. Doesn't want to take it. That was a two dice into a one. That was a little bit... Uh, a little bit fortunate there, actually. So what's the big idea here? Is this just a bomb into the hands of the tower reversed, regardless of all the players around him? Twenty seconds left to make the call. I get the feeling we're just doing this. Yeah, complete disregard for any interception threat whatsoever. The pass is good, the catch is good. And you got three seconds to click on the end zone. He's done it. So he does score quickly after all that. 
<laughs> well, it's all about the one turner staying out now because, as you say, very correctly, Jape, that if it does stay out, the wizard becomes the big factor in this match. Big, big KO roll. He's back. Was the reverie really out? So realistically, Singe kind of needs a blitz. Just so he can try to take out the one turner or even just bolt the thing. But, I mean, as you're all correctly saying, it's not renowned as the most gifted one turning player in Rebel, is a lot of way and It's a Monkey Chunks classic, so. It's prone to failure, shall we say? But this is all Singe can really do. You just set up and you're hoping for either Nuffle to do you a favour or A, to just fail something along the way. I quite like putting the sidesteppers on the front line because you can use that. He gets control if they stay on the feet of where these players go and you can use that to try and block some of the path passageways through. Extra rerolls galore. It's now four versus six. We've got ten rerolls in this match. That ball very nicely protected by two strength four pieces. And a strong arm accurate guard helping out with that block. Important to find a knockdown here, and does. But at the very least, no removal there forces a dodge from Alave and Deuce. Has to go through the tackle zone of this witch. He could blitz it out the way, of course. The witch. We're still not seeing much in the way of removals on these elves, are we? I wonder if Batman could change that. <gasps> Brings over an assist uh, he doesn't need. It's strength four vampire. It's a push only. And that's cleared up the channel for the one turner. go six on the pass and more than a one on the catch and now it's just three GFIs with sprint well with sheer feet here we go oh he's down well we need a we're gonna need a reroll and we need another one and we don't quite find the snake it's 3-3 in the Imperium <laughs> final. <laughs> Alawi and Deuce always making you sweat on it by the looks of things. Right, here we go again. very difficult to call who's played the better, who quote unquote, I hate using this term, but deserves it more. It's been an absolute whirlwind of dice all the way through.
high kick. So we're not dishing out more rerolls this time, at least. Again, targeting that RG5 strip ball piece. Which is the major defensive threat, isn't it? <laughs> so again, as you'd expect, the ball is going to be held in the backfield on the thrower and all of the catchers are going to go forward and what what Sinju is basically relying on here is the fact that this there's, there's so many scoring threats that you can't possibly knock down all of them It's weird that you look at an elf team and see the two war dancers here as probably maybe the fourth and fifth most important pieces on this team. Now, he could hit the ball here. Because you've got a Larvae and Deuce who's movement 13 and is more than in range to take a hit against the thrower. Super Dragon's not quite there for an assist. And nobody else on the team can make it for an assist. So it'll be a one dice at best. You got Juggernaut, so I mean you'd actually probably take the boat down, wouldn't you, on the throw? Are we gonna go for this? No, he's gonna go with Batman. And just take a two dice against Glor and Lana. Finally an arm break. Ran a stun. Haven't used Mighty Blow. We are gonna pile on now. Nothing doing again. Hello, Kanuki. Welcome along. It's been a hell of a game, this one. We're about to start turn 14. It's goes a long way on Deuce to base the ball just like that well we've seen this fail before forcing the chance of the snake out of Singe and forcing that player backwards as well which gives him more to do on the inevitable throw but of course he could just dump the ball short to one of these war dancers and then just try a handoff play to the tower reverse here. it's so difficult to stop this elf team from scoring It's going to be a hypno gaze. No, it's not. It's going to be a dodge play. And there is the hypno against the, the better of the two war dancers to hit there. It's a good choice. 
Of course, you can't just go to the, the Strength 4 Blitter instead. There's a POW. From the tower reversed. Remember, Super Dragon's around here. With his sphere of influence, if you like. Yeah. We are gonna hit a larvae and deuce. Dodge will do its thing there, so we'll have to make the the, uh, the dodge away anyway. But he's reduced the amount of distance he has to uh, to go there. Actually, could just go at the witch elf here. The witch elf's free. Nope, we're not gonna do that. Stalling one more turn out is actually bad for Singe. Because assuming he then gets one turn back, Singe only has one turn to score himself. Although, of course, that, if he doesn't score himself, then A can't score either. He does just take the block. Finds a pow here against the lineman. So he is stalling. Oh, he's bolted a lot and deuce. Into a stun. Well, not good enough. He'd have wanted the removal there. That was about the only chance he was going to get to bolt that player. But A has a real chance to... He can double GFI with a chorf here. To get a one dice on the ball. Another double GFI there if he wants to find an assist. There might be a better way of doing that. Mm. Vampire Leap. So this will be a hypno gaze attempt. Two plus hypno gaze is good. So it's two GFIs now. For a two dice on the ball. With Bobligors. Oh, an injury. Finally, Super Dragon claims a victim, but we appo that straight away because we've got three appos to use. And it was just a badly hurt. In fact, no, it wasn't. It was a... That was a perm, and we've appo that into a badly hurt, so we'll get that player back. God, appo was so quick, I didn't even get a chance to see. Here we go. Two GFIs from the Chaos Dwarf. That's a knockdown. A stun would have been good enough there. He can't get that ball because he's out of movement. I think, um, from what I've seen so far, I think Singe has actually been fairly happy with how his team works defensively. But hasn't been quite so happy when he's been given the ball and said, here you go. That's a foul. From Batman and Glorum Lana's injured. And that's probably going to draw an Apo as well. Well, well. I would say. I feel like when he's been given the ball and had to make his own touchdown on his own drive, he's been a bit sort of, eh, well, I guess I'll just throw it to the Pro Elves. Defensively fine, but he's not been given the chance to play defensively because of the fact that A's team just has a natural one turn, which just runs in all the time. 
So it's sort of taken away a lot of the natural strength of Singe's team. It remains 3-3. Three, three. Two plus dodge is good. We're going to look to try... I think we'll possibly base that vampire as well. We'll try and clear the chove. And get the ball back into the hands of the thrower. Finds the power on Bob Legos. Yeah. Now where do you throw this ball? Do you throw this ball? Well you kind of have to because there's an AG5 leap leaping vampire around. Ball back in the hands of the thrower. I mean, is he just going to bomb this? He is. All right. He's just going to absolutely yeet this down the field. Over the top of an elf, and that is an interception, is it? No. Well, it's worked again. That was a three-plus pass. And we can leap away to score here. That'll do it. 4-3. <laughs> you might not like it, but it's working. <laughs> It's, uh, it's getting the job done. 4-3. And we're back into undeuced territory. Now, it is two turns to score. So the likely result is 4-4 here in overtime. At which point the wizard is now gone, of course. And that coin toss could really make all the difference. If, if A wins the coin toss, he'll just one turn touchdown again to win this thing. It's just, it's always the case with the natural one-turner. You, you rely on the natural one-turner failing. <laughs> Changing weather nice. What a night. So we haven't quite got all the players out the way that we need out the way here. There you go, Super Dragon. That'll do it. So there's a gap that just needs... Oh, hold on. He's on the way through. So there's a gap now that just needs a 2 plus dodge through. With Induce. I imagine it's probably time. <sighs> so there's four opportunities for the snake that we need to see. 
He's gone with a vampire here. So he's now going to hypno-gaze. So now he doesn't need a dodge. He can just find a gap through there. I don't know why he leaped. I feel like he could have just made that from there. It would be a 3+, plus, but it's better than risking the leap, I suppose. I don't know. Well, there was five opportunities for the snake, I suppose, just to catch as well. Now there's only three. So here goes the lobby and deuce again. Oh, and Shafi is there at the last, but it's 4-4. Four, four. I mean, you have to say, this has to be frustrating for Singe, because how do you, how do you stop it? So, can the elves one turn to force another one turn attempt for 5-5? Five, five? Well, I mean, the elves have got great one turn potential of their own. They've got two movement nine catches and one of them's got leap. And with, with a defensive setup like this, this is going to be about as easy a one turn as you're likely to see for Singe. Movement nine, he can leap over the vampire. He needs two pushes. So we could end up in a situation where this finishes All right, here we go. Blitz. So that probably screws up that one turn attempt and that actually might allow Alawe and Deuce to get through under the ball here near enough. Oh, we roll a double skull, Super Dragon. Never mind. Oh, the, wait, now you can take a shot against Unduce. No, we're going to go for the one turn anyway. Gets the push. Reroll that to find the push. So he needs two pushes. This block will be one of them at a turnover. Oh, it's not. No, he's got block on this player. I do apologize. Right, so we can still fix this. He needs to leap Glor and Lana into there now. Add you five, two plus leap is good. So we've now fixed that problem. And we've still got two attempts to make this. He's got pro on this player. Oh, I might have proed that. i try and find the push, actually. Didn't think about that one. So it's going to be 4-4. Four, four. And it's going to go to overtime. So now just about protecting his best pieces now. Remember that A has now had two blitzes in this game. We'll see which way the coin toss goes in overtime, but it's uh, it's a big old dice roll either way, isn't it? <laughs> Not even picking the ball up and trying to go for the pass. Gonna go for a foul on Super Dragon. <laughs> Armor break. Knockout could be really, really big. No send off either. I'd apo that. And the coach of the Infinite Krakens agrees.
two blitzers in the semi-final as well. well. And we need to get rid of the Morka meme. Off against Claw a lot of uses. I don't like using the reroll. I suppose he has loads. Finds an armor break. Does find an injury for the second time actually in the game. Double six, double six, one. Final Apo's gone. Without a three rerolls apiece. Well, the greed was rewarded there. Bloodlust is going to send this vampire off after he takes this block. Which will be a double push. And it's 4-4 overtime. <laughs> Where incredibly, there's not even any KOs to roll. So who wins the coin toss? It's all on that. wins. As we said, it's an important coin toss because that natural one turn is on the field. And looks to me like A's won the toss. Now it's the usual question of how do you protect against a natural one turn? So you're seeing nil-nil on the screen, it's actually 4-4, four, four. although it's res format, so things like SPP don't even matter. The important thing is it's a tie game. We'll set a Larwe and do up on the LOS, and we'll go from there. Now, interesting thing that has changed is that the weather is very sunny. So of course, with us having to start the game again, it's taken another weather roll, and the weather is now very sunny. So that might affect things, because of course that's minus one to the pass that A has to make from his thrower to allow we and Deuce. So that could have an effect in it. There's nothing we can do to change that. Barring quitting out, and that's going to reload again. So here we go. It's a blitz! Game on! And I tell you what, the elves are right in position to take advantage of that. It should be 3 3 rerolls, so we need to let A know that he can't use. Uh, one of those extra rerolls. He should have fired one before the game, really, but then equally Singe has an apothecary that he shouldn't have, though with it being a oh, quote-unquote overtime format, the Apo won't matter. But it should be three rerolls and three rerolls, yeah. Hey. 
But we've suddenly got a situation where this blitz has allowed the tower reverse to get under the ball. And honestly, we still have a blitz to take. You're going to blitz the one turner. It's a one dice skull. It's re-rolled into a tackle knockdown. There's no armor break, but it's good enough to see that player on the floor. It means that we have a game here. Ball in the hands of the tower reversed. Now, you do have the RG5 strip ball blitzer here. Ready to make a right mess of this situation. So, I mean, A really needs to get the ball on the floor this turn. And honestly, I'd be I'd be hitting the ball before I did any of this stuff. His blocks just aren't necessary right now. If you were to double score one of these and then not have the reroll for that block. Brings Batman across. Here we go. He's going the long way with the strip ball. Dauntless kicks in. Two dice. Double push is good enough to strip the thing. But it's not good enough to knock over the tower reversed. Ball is stripped into the hands of A's lineman. There's a power on Glor and Lana from Super Dragon. That's a stun. That's a stun. That's probably going to be good enough here. That's the only tackle piece that, uh, that, that Singe has got. He's now stunned for a turn. He does have a strip ball war dancer though. So that now becomes the key piece. Failed GFI. That'll be one of the three rerolls. Yep, no guys, you're good. We've got three seconds to work with here. And we're out of time. So the strip ball war dance is right there. So now the game is just can you strip this ball, scoop it up with someone else? The tower reversed is in range to score. All the elves back to their feet. That's a really important power on that frenzy block because that could have been all sorts of trouble actually. So now the war dancers got a one dice here. Do you want to roll the dice to make that a two? Or are you happy with strip ball trying to make that a one? We are going to go for a one dice. He finds a pow.
Oh, and the ball in the hands of the war answer. That's a disastrous scatter for Singe. Because he now can't hand it off to the tower reverse. He can't get rid of the ball from this player. And he still has to dodge from Super Dragon, and we know how that ends. Well, apparently. Well, it was a crazy game before, and it continues to be a crazy game now. Sin Jackie just deciding, okay, I need a turn where I just keep a hold of this ball at this point. Keep a hold of it for now, see if we can win it on the next turn. Now, Super Dragon has a 3 plus dodge. No, 4 plus dodge. Uh, if you were to dodge that player away. So, have a 2 dice on the ball here. 1 in 9 against the Witch. In fact, if he dodged that player away, you could have made it even better. He can come around the back on the 2 plus dodge. But he needs a 2 plus GFI there as well, unless he cuts the corner again. Which he would do, to be fair. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So two two pluses there. Dr. Hep raiding with a party of four. Welcome along, Hep recap viewers. Uh, it's, this is overtime, so this is confusing because we had a glitch in the game, uh, which meant that we've had to reset this. The, the actual match finished 4-4 four, four and has gone to overtime. We then had to reset the game because Cyanide's wonderful work bugged out. So now we're back in overtime format. The natural one-turner that, that uh, the Infinite Krakens have got is was lined up and all ready to score. They won the toss. Singe rolled a blitz. Has managed to secure the ball. He's then lost it. He's then got it back again. And it's only turn two of overtime. So I think we've had a pause again here because we're out of time. Okay, so we're going with the... We're just dodging everything out. Approach. Hypno is there. Then he can dodge out Alawi and Deuce. And then he can come through this way. For his two dice hit on the ball with Super Dragon. He finds a push only. Doesn't re-roll that, which I think is a bizarre choice. Unless he's already used the re-roll somewhere else. There's a KO. He is down a re-roll, actually, so he must have used the re-roll somewhere. Okay, this is all happening very quickly. Ah, the re-roll was on Batman's Bloodlust. That's what it was. Okay, so we're now looking to catch up. The Witch Elf has an opportunity, actually, to surf Super Dragon. If he can set it up right. And that dodge... ...is not from Tackle. Oh, must we have so many bugs?
How about you guys? But this is becoming tiresome in the extreme. I can't start it all over again. I have to go out soon. There's a knockdown on the Super Dragon. So Singe is bringing the ball back over now. Oh, there's a failed leap from the tower reversed. <laughs> He's gonna go and throw that catcher into scoring range. The throw is taken down as well, so there's a stun. Singe has now managed to turn this over. To the extent where he now does have possession of the ball, but can he keep a hold of it? Look, there's an anti five vampire here. And of course, there's bloodlust opportunity, well, not bloodlust, sorry, there's hypno gaze opportunities available as well. The ball is, is just not safe where it is. He needs more players in that screen. Because A um, Cannon should just bloodlust his... That's a dodge from the chuff. Uh. So that block opens up the channel. Do you bring Super Dragon in with two GFIs for the two dice? Do you come in with the one dice from Duke always the first? Well, you could still make this two dice. Depends if you want to roll another Bloodlust or not. And that is a Bloodlust. He's had to re-roll that. That is his last re-roll gone. Remember that he can't use that last one. I somehow had a funny feeling we'd end up in this situation. So there's a two dice on the ball with strip ball now. But there's going to be no recovery. Gets the push. It's good enough to strip. Oh, and I'll tell you what. What a... Perfect scatter as far as A is concerned. It's, it's between the sideline and his strength five player. Here comes Alawi and Deuce. He's got 13 movement to play with. He's got a hold of that. Hands off to Super Dragon who drops it. No re roll. And it's caught by Duke Always the first. So that's not a turnover. <laughs> so there's still no sure hands in this one. Singe has one reroll left himself. Needs to do something this turn, or you're just going to hand this to one deuce who's going to score on the next one. That's pretty straightforward. So th this game might actually end this turn one way or the other. Right, that gives you a one dice. Finds the pow. And again, it's a pretty bang on scatter for Ray. That's about the best scatter he could have hoped for there. Barring it just going into the hands of his vampire. So now you just need... Well, it's actually five nonsense from here, isn't it? He's going to come round and he's going to hit Alawi and Deuce. 
That's a skull. That's the last reroll. It's a both down. It's, well, it's, well, there we go. So he's got block. That was an alignment. RG5 pickup has failed. It's it's a mess. It's a complete mess at this point. Jamus, I, I can't even begin to explain what's happened here, mate. Uh, it's 4-4. This is overtime, but it's not overtime, if that makes sense. We had to reset the game. Because there was a pause between turn 16 and overtime, which just broke everything. So we've now had to reset the game. A was all set up to score another one turn. Then there was a blitz, and then we're just in all sorts of nonsense here. So both teams are out of rerolls. Even though it says that A has one, he can't use it. Because he only had three coming into overtime. Which elf is stunned? And there's a power on the tower reversed. So Singer's chance to win the game on the next turn is gone. Because he's not in scoring range now. We could be here all day. This has to be the longest game of Imperium that there's ever been. And we play two minute turns in this. Okay, so the RG5 is a way to be a scoring threat. The ball is in three elf tackle zones. Vampire makes the blitz. One dice push. We're going to have to scatter this again. He could pro it. He does. Pro fails. Scatters into the hands of the vampire. Casual five plus catch there. Okay, now what? Well, there's a natural two dice on the ball. If you put a player here. There's natural one dice on the ball there. That felt a little risky. That's a frenzy trap. I don't like where we're going with this. Gets away with it. Properly gets away with that. To singe. And that's a good scatter from his point of view now. Remember he's got no rerolls here. If he fails anything. He pretty much hands the game... To A. And all of these players are in base contact with Super Dragon. That's a one dice pow. That'll fix that problem. There's the pickup from the Pro Elf Blitzer now, who's just legging it over this way. And is presumably just looking to rely on Blodge at this point. <coughs> That's a dodge from Tackle, it's failed. Oh man. I have to go out very, very soon. 
this stream might have to end before this game finishes. I can't promise you we'll make it to the end of this. All right, two dice with tackle, finds the pow. So now we're in the realms of Ikamaus being able to pick this up. Or he can go with the thrower and try and pass to the Agi 5 and win this here and now. Rolls a one. Doesn't have a re-roll on that. And the ball's loose again. And now, all of a sudden, there's a chance for Singe to win the game. Because his ward answer is home free, if you can get the ball to him. The only problem being that somehow he's managed to get every single one of his players to be based by tackle. I mean, there's a 2 plus 2 plus to win this, or 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus, I should say. Uh, what's... Hang on, we're moving over to, to protect these two on the sideline. So you can dodge out of here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, well, there's an extra 2 plus for the GFI before your handoff. So four 2 pluses there. And the only reroll you'd have is a pro attempt on the handoff. But with the rate these teams have thrown ones, I wouldn't be convinced by that. Blitzing the score and threat first, which is smart, actually. That's a good move. Before we try this. So at least if this goes wrong, we can't be uh, punished the other way. All right, has just gone for the safer play of getting the ball in the hands of the ward answer and again trying to rely on Blodge. He, if he can make dodges here, he can probably screen this. First dodge is alright. Second dodge is alright as well. And suddenly Singe is in a good spot. What is going to happen next in this game? You know that bit in the campaign when a helicopter falls onto the onto the pitch? If that happened right now, I wouldn't even be surprised. What a night to start off. It was a fairly nothing block. There's a GFI. Now he's got option one is to dodge the chorf. Option two is to dodge the bull sentinel. The chorf has tackle, but it's a worse dodge. The bull sentinel has break tackle, but it's a worse block. Can't use that reroll, of course. If you're wondering why he's not using that, he, he's not entitled to it. We had to reset the game. Failed dodge on the IG5. Right, at this point, surely the best thing to do is blitz the thrower away with this player, hand off to the catcher, and win. Or, almost fail your dodge that way. Roll a power that way. That'll do it. Singe is going to win this thing. He doesn't need a GFI with the ward answer. And we're not going to get the... We're going to have to sort of awkwardly concede the game afterwards but that's going to do it Singe gets the golden goal golden touchdown when he runs this in and will be the first ever Rebel Imperium champion and phew, I was at a lot of work to get there
I mean, it's elves winning, but the other option was that the natural one turning elf and the strength five elf won. So I think it was elves winning either way. So now, of course, we have to awkwardly just leave the match because it is finished. There you go, there's been a concede there now. So congratulations to Singe. Who becomes the first Rebel Imperium champion. Wins that one 5-4. Despite what this may tell you, the game has finished 5-4. Um, what a bloody game. If you go back and watch that, what a ridiculous game. A little over two hours there. Minus if you want the the nonsense of trying to fix the weird pause bug thing. Um, everyone who has watched the game, thank you very much. If you've enjoyed it, free, feel free to come along and play in Rebel Imperium Season 2. Uh, there's an announcement on the Rebel Discord if you're not already on the Imperium server uh, that you can use to uh, to find the website. And if needs be, someone will provide you a link to the Discord. Um, I have to end the stream here because I've got things I need to get done very, very urgently now because this is overrun by a good 40 minutes to what I was expecting. Uh, so do we have anyone else casting rebel -y stuff? right now um is barely anyone casting blood ball right now it doesn't look like there's any rebel stuff on the go so we'll throw you guys over to slade because slade does some stuff around uh rebel is one rebel miners of course um would have the longest username in the world before i try to type this out All right, so congratulations to Singe, commiserations to A. That was a hell of a game, 5-4, um, and I will catch you guys. I'll be back on Sunday, I think, for United Car Scarab Kemerits, who are missing 630 TV this week, which should be a great laugh in itself. Cheers, guys.